to Earwash. We are the show who explores the world of podcasting to bring to light shows we find entertaining, worthwhile, and important. Take our views as our own, as your opinions can and probably will be different. And if they are, please contact us at earwashshow at gmail.com to tell us why. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to the Earwash Show. This is Blake, and with me with a brand new microphone is Andrew. Hi, everybody. I hope the audio quality is uh, slightly improved, if not drastically. It sounds it sounds heavenly. I hope it I hope it helps out, and uh, I'm not sure that we've gotten any iTunes complaints yet. But uh, hopefully, this will put an end to at least one phase of anything that people could start complaining about. So, right, up, upgrading the shows is always a just a slow process. But you know, I guess me and you were in it for the long haul, so it was time to invest in some quality mics to do the shows with. And uh, just a new microphone doesn't mean that it's the end of our audio issues. We've still still got a long way to go to figure out actually how we're uh, manipulating this Google Hangouts and all that. It's a, it's an, a fun adventure, and we'll see if we can piece together an actually good-sounding show by the time we quit doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I know it. Oh, me. Well, how was your week? Uh, the week's been pretty good. I had a short week at work because of the uh, holiday. I'm taking a big vacation day tomorrow. Oh, nice. Because uh, um, big announcement, um, my wife and I just found out that uh, she's pregnant not too long ago. With and a baby? So, with a real baby. All right. And so I have uh, decided to start my own little side business from work, and I've um, just put up a sign in my yard and a, like a little sign on Craigslist about mowing lawns and stuff. So I've been doing that a lot, and I've actually got like seven or eight clients who I now take care of their yard just to make a little extra cash on the side. And uh, I took a vacation day because we're going out of town this weekend for the 4th of July up to my in-laws in Michigan to uh, play around in Lake Michigan a little bit. And so I needed to uh, find some time to get those yards mowed before I took off for the whole weekend and let people's you know front yards turn into cornfields. No, so uh, no. that's why I took a vacation day, just because I have a couple more vacation days I need to spend before September or October. I forget whenever that flips over. But uh, so that's uh, that was my week, short and sweet. Only had to work two days this week, and uh, I get to go mow all day tomorrow. Well, how about you? Do you have anything fun? How's your hand healing up? No, it's it's a lot better. It's a lot better now. It's uh, uh still scabby, scabby and gross. I've you know, I'm not a big picker, so once the scab is on there, I just leave it on and you know, let my my body do its thing. I was about to ask you if you were picking at it. Oh, God, no. Did they not. give you a nice salve to keep the infection out? Yeah, we, we put a uh, nice poultice on it and uh, some uh, different leaves we ground up that we found in uh, the tractor yard uh, parking lot. Just, you know... Just mud and sticks and whatever crap we could find. What we just took the top off the storm drain and just scooped a uh, a wad of just yuck out of there and plastered it on it, and it seems to be doing okay. But that's that's wonderful. I, I can't believe you, hey, your hand hasn't fallen off yet because of yeah. that. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to lose it. I think it's going to be all right. Oh, can't you imagine being Captain Hook for for a while? That'd be fun. Well, all the advances in medical technology, I'd at least hope for like a gorilla's hand or a horse hoof or something. You should, you should something. just get an Xbox controller installed instead. Yeah. Or just some USB ports or something. There you go. Know. That'd be pretty sweet. It'd be like RoboCop. Future RoboCop. Some flash drives where my fingers used to be. Oh man, now you're just, talking. Just plug myself into the computer. That'd you be... are the computer. That's right. You'd be the beginning of the robot takeover. Did we get any, uh, What's that thing we do? The wiretap? You want to do the wiretap? We got an email, right? We do have an email, and I totally forgot to write down that segment of wiretap. Good thing you mentioned that. <laughs> May I see what we got here? Let's jump into the wiretap. Let's do it! We take suggestions and we listen to your crap. Everybody gather around for the Earwash wiretap. And for the wiretap this week, uh... The wiretap segment is, of course, our listener feedback segment where we have a listener write in an email, and we'll read it aloud on air. We've got a kind of a lengthy one here, so let's see if I can make my way through it without stumbling too much. Uh, right. This is from uh, Mr. Dale Andrews, and Dale is the host of the Paper Keg podcast, 
which, hint, hint, might come up a little bit later in the show. And Dale starts, Hey, Earwash! I started getting into podcasts when I got my first classic-style iPod, 06, question mark? I knew the power of iTunes and this device. There was more to the player than just storing your music. So I took a chance and haven't looked back since. When I started big-time commuting in 08 or so is when I really knuckled down and became invested in listening to podcasts. What with about two hours a day or so spent in the car, I needed something. Here's a few that Dale listens to. I listen to The Besties. It's Polygon's monthly video game podcast. It used to be weekly, but the format couldn't support a weekly show without getting really stale. They switch to a monthly schedule, and they chat about the best games that come out in the previous month. Really tops, and I respect the guys at Polygon and their commentary, and I hold them in high regard. It's also very funny. So, The Besties is one that Dale listens to. Another one is Crit Juice. Probably my favorite podcast featuring D&D. These guys drink, heavenly, parenthetical, during the session, which I would never even subscribe to because not being the drunk guy in the room is probably the worst thing ever. But the editing is so tight that you would never realize how awful it probably really gets. Also, the DM for their game is the best, and I've never encountered in any way the guy so imaginative and inspiring. It really has you coming back for more to see what he does next. And The Echo Rift is another show he listens to. Echo Rift. Friends I personally know that publish one of the highest quality podcasts you will ever hear. They pick a topic, usually the latest movie or a comic or TV show, and talk about it for 30 minutes. Don and Mike can make you fall in love with something without having to even ever see it or hurt it yourself. Even stuff you hated, they can find a way to make you love it. Great stuff. And the last one he goes into here is Let's Talk Comics. A semi-new interview show with Jim Viscardi. Sorry if I stumbled on that. Jim Viscardi. Every episode, he gets a different comic creator on the horn and lets them tell their story. It's amazing. Some shows I cannot get through because the call quality is bad, and I don't tolerate that. But for <laughs> other shows where the quality is bearable, the show is really a treat. You only read the finished product in comics, so it's nice to get to know the people behind the floppies and not just make assumptions of that person from what you read on their Twitter, etc., etc., these are but some I listen to as regularly as I can. I look forward to hearing the show. Thanks so much. Thank so you, that Dale. was a, uh, a message from Mr. Dale Andrews, who is the host of the Paper Keg podcast. That's a neat show. I really enjoy the Paper Keg show. So much yeah, so I just bought their t-shirt. Yeah, I put up a post on uh, the Metal Shark Studio site where they're selling shirts for a limited time, it's by the end of this month. I think by the end of July, you got to have your order in. And they're pretty good-looking shirts. They're great-looking shirts, and uh, I think they went ahead and invested and got a little bit of a higher quality T-shirt, which I appreciate. Um, they even posted something about how, uh, you know, at a Comic Con, you'll get a you, what you think is a nice shirt, and then you go home and you wash it once, and then it's shrunk, and then feels like cardboard the next day. So you, you can see your nipples through it while you wear it, and. Exactly. Belly button. You can tell yeah. how excited you really are about that podcast or that comic right. book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, let's, uh, we talked before the show about the feed segment, and we decided to change things up a little bit. Do you want to jump into the feed? Yep, let's get into the feed. You can find all the podcasts that you need when you listen to the Earwall feed. All right, in the feed before, we were talking about shows that, that we liked, and we were selling them to, to everybody else. And then we talked about how in the echo chamber we were talking about shows that we liked and how we were selling them to everybody else. So we decided to go back and now on the feed talk about what did we listen to during the week, what were the high points, what was worth, worth talking about. Well, for me, this week, a new episode of Welcome to Night Vale came out. And it was a two-part series uh, of their live show that they did. You know, each show is usually maybe 20, 25 minutes. The live show, each episode, episode A and B, were both 45 minutes. So this was the part B of the live show. I said on the last episode, hearing 
the characters live on stage and the crowd reaction was really cool and that carried on over to this one. But they they told uh, a complete story through part A and B, and getting to hear you know the, the conclusion of it this week was was really cool. So I uh, I enjoyed that. And uh, let's see, on the giant bomb the giant bomb cast, they just hired two new people for the studio. They had one of the regular hosts leave, uh, Vinny Caravella. He's moving to New York. Still going to work for Giant Bomb. But they have two new employees in the building, and it was their first episode on the Giant Bomb cast. So, got to hear two new voices this time around on there. So, that was pretty cool. That's great. I need to write down the Giant Bomb cast and maybe download some of that. I haven't, uh, haven't ever listened to the Giant Bomb cast, but I see it atop, high atop the lists, not just necessarily video game, but I think there's a, just a, a popular podcast in general. Yeah, you just wait, because that's what I'm throwing at you at the echo chamber. Woot woot! You'll be giant bombing it next nice. week. What about you? What were your highlights? Well, um, I've kind of discovered a new podcaster um, last week and this week since our last episode. Um, uh, an Australian gentleman named uh, Will Anderson. Um, I discovered him because he made an appearance on the Todd Glass Show on the uh, the June 20th episode, number 157 of the Todd Glass Show. And I just thought he was just entertaining as all hell. And I just really loved the episode that he's on. He had a, a wonderful take, an outsider's take on life in America because he's Australian, but he's also a stand-up comedian. So, you know, stand-up comedians generally have a way with words and they're wordsmiths. But he had really great phrasings and just... Really great ideas, and uh, I don't know. I just really enjoyed listening to him talk. And then he, you know, plugged his own podcast, which I was glad to hear. And he has one called I'm not I'm sure it's an acronym that stands for something, but it's called TOFOP T O F O P with Will Anderson and Charlie Clawson. But I also listened to an episode of that, and it was also highly entertaining. I really enjoyed that as well. And then he also happened to pop up on yet another podcast that I listen to regularly this week. He goes um, around. Yeah, it's just all of a sudden, this guy came out of the dark, came out of nowhere, and smacked me in the face. And I started following him on Twitter, and he's really funny, of course, because he's a comedian and all that. But I just really enjoy his take on just about anything that I've heard him talk about. So uh, check out Will Anderson. That's Will with one L. Will Anderson on the Twitter or uh, check out his appearance on the Todd Glass Show, or his own podcast, which is Tofop. Well, that's and, good that at least you liked him enough that you were willing to seek out his his own show, and lo and behold, here he is on what two of the regular shows that you listen to. Yeah, that's it's crazy. It just seems like uh, I don't know the stars aligned for some reason, and it was his, uh, it was his just week. brought him brought him into my life. All right. Were there any other highlights you had for this week? Um, I really, I've been really digging on the "I Seem Fun," a diary of Jen Kirkman podcast too. Uh, Jen Kirkman's another stand-up comedian that I really enjoy, and I've had her book for a couple of months, but I haven't actually read it. But I just started picking that up about within the, within the last few days, a week ago, and uh, it has just really given me insight into her. And the book is just amazing, too. So uh, if you have uh, any interest, check out the I Seem Fun, the Diary of Jen Kirkman podcast. It is a really great show. And uh, she is a writer on the um, Chelsea Lately show, which I'm not a huge Chelsea Handler fan. But Jen Kirkman is just a breath of fresh air. I, I really like her take on life and all the funny things she does, too. And her, her podcast is just her talking straight for usually about 40, 45 minutes to an hour. And she's done a couple of live episodes, too, like we were talking about last episode, how people are starting to do lots of live episodes right. for a, a fresh revenue source or whatnot. Lots of stand-up comedians will do you know, a stand-up show and then the next night have a live podcast taping or you know, have two shows in one night and have one of them be stand-up and one of them be a podcast taping. But uh, I, I just really like Jen Kirkman a lot, too. And she's also a good buddy with the Todd Glass Show. See, I found out about her 
on the Todd Glass podcast. And then I started listening to her podcast as well, kind of like I did with Will Anderson. But Jen Kirkman I've been listening to for probably about a year or so. Cool. Cool. How about you? What else? Did you have anything else that uh, you got into this week besides Night Vale? On the... And Giant Bombcast? We're Alive is quickly approaching the end of their run, which oh, no. to me is dreadful, right? They had this last episode that you know they do their show in three part series this finished out uh chapter 48 i think which was kind of weird to me that they're not ending on chapter 50 yeah why wouldn't they do that i have no idea but they wound out 48 and then they're doing the last episode i forget how long they said it was going over an hour i think but they're going to do it live oh wow and then then they're going to take and if you I think it's five dollars. You get it at the the first or second week of July, and or if you just want to wait, you know, keep it free. You have to wait till the end of July to listen to it. So these guys, I've listened to every episode. They've kept me entertained, and this is I'll go ahead and pay them the five dollars up front to go ahead and get it get it early, so I can so I can see what happens to everybody on the show, which is a a cool model I think for them to. You know, they're going to give it away for free, but to get it early, it'll help them bring in a little revenue. You know, hey, it's five bucks. They, they've entertained me for, what, over two years now? So, it's, it's, you know, I'll give them five dollars. That's, that's no problem. You know, for all the, the entertainment, all the ear joy they've provided for me. Even though it was just 20 minutes at a time. But it always kept me wanting more each week. So, yeah, they can have my five dollars. Well, that, that's a that's a great model for um, how you can support your podcast. So um, they have the last episode. If you want it, it's basically if you want to on demand, then you have to pay a few dollars. But if you want it for free, it's still be available free. You just have to wait a little bit. Right. And they they went into on their website a, a little bit about what they're going to do after we're alive. They never said if it'll be another zombie show or or what they're going to do. But it'll be another audio drama. Yeah, I was just about to ask you if they if they had revealed any plans for after the show. That's cool that they're going to put together another audio drama. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to see what they have next. I'll I'll miss We're Alive, but just curious to see what they do now. Well, I'm glad personally that I've only discovered it recently because of you um, and Keith. But. Uh, it just must drive you nuts as I look through this list. There are hundreds of episodes here, it looks like. But they're all like a week or two apart, and they're only 20 minutes apiece. Oh, yeah. That must drive you nuts that you can only listen to one episode, and then you have to wait from May 19th to May 26th to only get another 20-minute episode. Yeah, that, that's like... I was I was really happy when I discovered the television show Lost that it was already in season four, because that meant I can just hop on Netflix and rip through... Four seasons back to back to back to back to back, right, and not yeah. have to not have to wait a week in between. Because the, by the time they got to the final season, and I started watching it on live television, I was just pulling out my hair. Like, I I don't even remember what happened last week. Why are they taking so long? What is going on here? Let's go. I'm just you know one of the most impatient people on earth. So I'm I'm glad that I'm not glad that the podcast is uh, ending here. Um, talking about we're alive. I'm not glad they're ending. But I am glad that I just get to plow through the whole thing. You know what I mean? I don't have to wait for a week in between each 20-minute episode. The the one thing listening to it going back now that you can laugh at is at the end of the show when they say, join us again in two weeks. Yeah. It's around a holiday or sometimes they just take a week off between episodes. It'll be the end of the chapter before they start part one of the next chapter. Oh, that's yeah, when they do the two-week break? Yep. So after chapters? That was so, awful. So I was going to um, ask you if you had any insight onto how they produce their uh, their podcast. Do they do each show that week and put it together? Do you think they do a whole chapter at once and then release it in three parts so they only have to get together like once a month to record? Or do you think that they recorded the whole damn thing in two weeks and just are releasing it over a three-year, four-year period? Well, I did get curious, usually with any podcast, I get curious as to what the people look like that I'm listening to. Yes, and we I talked went, about that last time, too, yeah. Right, and I went to we're alive. I think it's we're alive.com, and they had some behind-the-scenes 
uh, features of how they so how they do some of the sound effects. Uh, basically, everybody's standing around almost in like a half circle with microphones hanging in front of them talking, except for one person, and that's the guy Michael on the show. And they have to rec- he records his over the phone, so they have to record all his audio first, and then go back and you know fill him in with everybody else. And it seems like they were recording at least a chapter at a time, all three parts for a chapter at one time. Then okay. they'd all take a break. For, I think they'd take a break for a week, and then they'd come back and record all three again. But it shows some of the post-production stuff, too, that I found fascinating, and lining up all the audio that they have, all the different tracks from all the different voices, all the sound effects. I thought putting five or six things together in Audacity to put one show together was bad. And this audio on his screen is split to, like, 30 or 40 different tracks. Good Lord. Right. So, yeah, I was I was pretty impressed. I think I asked you about a recommended We're Alive for the Dunk Tank, didn't I? Yes, you did, sir. So we'll get your full feedback on that in a little bit. But we got a super, super dupe interview with Dale Andrews, and he was a blast to talk to. You want to jump into the orgasm and uh, turn Dell Andrews loose on the world? Yes, uh, as long as everyone's ready to sit back and listen to me be a total fanboy. I, I feel like I was <laughs> just kind of drooling at, at the feet of his holy robes. Uh, <laughs> just like, we're not worthy. And I feel like I came off as too much of a fanboy. I just got really excited to talk to him because I love his podcast so much. Now, Paper Keg, everyone, please go check out Paper Keg. And uh, you'll see why that I he totally turned me into a little bubbling pool at his feet. Right. Well, you had you had the opportunity. You had Dale Andrews in front of you. So if you were going to ask him anything, then that was the time. So I don't I don't blame you one bit. And I, I hope I didn't scare him off. I hope we actually get the opportunity to have him back on the show sometime. And I don't know. He'll probably be like, "Oh man, those guys. Oof. Can't handle <laughs> that again." Well, all right. Well, everybody, let's jump into the eargasm with Dale Andrews. Our special guest will cause your head to spasm. Sit back and enjoy your new eargasm. And welcome to the eargasm segment of the show. This week we have Mr. Dale Andrews with us. Dale, welcome to the show. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I like uh, I like what you're doing here, and I'm very flattered that you guys invited me on. Thank you. Well, we're honored to have you. Yeah, it's good to see you. Good to have you. Now, the first time I heard Dale's voice was on, surprise, surprise, a Skyrim Addict podcast. Yeah, the uh, I remember I was, I had just started emailing into Michael, like, you know, my thoughts on Skyrim, and I just loved listening to his show, and I was sitting in my basic Italian class one <laughs> evening, and he sent me an email, he's like, would you like to be on the show at any time? I'm like, I almost left the sh- I almost left class and went and... Uh, <laughs> I did it right then and there. I was so excited. I was like, I get to be on your Skyrim podcast. It was it was like the most flattering thing ever. I love the show and I love Skyrim, obviously. So it was cool to, that he invited me on. It was awesome. Have you ever made um, your co-host for the Paper Keg play Skyrim? Have you no, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't force them into anything they don't want to do. And obviously, they're if they're not repulsed by it, then it's something kinder, but meaning the same as repulsed. <laughs> it's just it's just not their thing, you know, so. Yeah, I've noticed they give you a hard time about that, if that's one of the only things they can make fun of you for. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's actually nice that um, it's one of the things that's cool that they can, that they do make fun of me about, so I keep it going about my love for Skyrim audibly on the show so they can troll me about it when they can. Well, it's enjoyed. So, um, Dale is the host of a Paper Keg podcast. Paper Keg is a wonderful name. Where did you come up with the title for your show? Well, when the uh, the guys and I wanted to start the show, we were throwing around all kinds of ideas for for a comics a comic a comics podcast, which is incidentally our original comic podcast, which was very loose. It didn't have any framework to it whatsoever. It was it was kind of like uh, the wheels were falling off as soon as we started, but it was called a comics podcast or something like that. And uh, 
for comic book podcasts, there's just a ton of podcasts out there called a comic book podcast, a comic, a comic a chat about comic podcast, or, or something like that. And we were just going for something different. And my co-host Slim, I think, came up with paper keg and it was just we were just looking for two like it was the early dot com area where we were just looking for two words that kind of jived with each other and paper was is loosely relevant to comics. Well it's very relevant to comics but you know comics podcasts and digital comics not so much and keg. I was gonna say not for Slim really so much. much. He, he's kinda off the paper. <laughs> yeah exactly. He's he's all digital for good yeah. reason but yeah, so we just went with paper keg and it really stuck and we really, really loved it. And it's kind of caught on and it's almost synonymous with comics for us at this point. So how long have you been doing the show? Because you said it was at the beginning of the dot-coms there. No, no, no. That was, that was just like the method we were using to find oh, okay. the name, the beginning of the dot-coms, so paper keg. But paper keg started a, a little over three years ago when we... Wow. So January 2011 is when we, I think, started getting the itch for to do a comic show. Like I said, previous our the previous show, a comics podcast, I think it was called. I can't even remember what it was called, but we had did that for. A, we had a passionate run for about nine months of that show, and I was only on it for the first three or four months, and then my son was born in August, so at that point, we weren't doing any remote recordings, it was all in person, I was driving up to Slim's house, and I just couldn't do it anymore, I wanted to be there for the baby and my wife, and and it, and then it just kind of like, I got out of the groove of doing it, and it was hard for me to get back on that horse, as it were, so I didn't make too many more appearance, appearances after August, and it kept going until about December of that of 2011, or 2000, yeah, no, 2010, and then Slim's son was born in December, and after that, the ba- the show was basically over. That it was just we just stopped doing the show, and then it was about a two month hiatus. And we started getting the the itch to do something and legitimately make it something with structure and a schedule and a, a time limit, and you know keep the quality that we believe in and stuff like that. So uh, we probably went to the planning stages until about March 2011, March or April, I think, we did the first show. So it's been around for a little over three years now. But that hiatus there was not the same hiatus that occurred during the paper keg, right? Did you also have a hiatus during paper keg? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the uh, story with that is about, we got about mm, into the 60s, so we were doing it for over a year. But Slim uh, got the job at Comixology. Disclaimer: He works for Comixology, and uh, that's an amazing job to to get there. Man, yeah, yeah, it was, I mean, me up. yeah. It was it was like a dream come true, and we were all so effing happy for him. It was amazing, an amazing opportunity. But he lived just north of Philadelphia with Jonesy, my other co-host, and. At that point, we were we were going back and forth to each other's houses every two weeks. I would go up there, they would come down to my house in South Jersey, and we would record everything in person because we that was the only way at the time we believed we could get the quality audio that we needed for the show. And he was moving up to New York or closer to New York and North North Jersey, and we just we were def- you know it sucked, but he had to do it. And uh, so from August 2012 to about November, it was kind of like a rocky road, October of that year. It was kind of like a rocky road we were doing. Uh, basically, we were preparing to end the show, and it wasn't going to go out on some huge bang. It was essentially, we get we, one final time in person, we were going to record a couple shows together, and then we never told anybody it was going to be the end we just said it was going to we we're going to be tapping the brakes it was going to be an extended hiatus and that bought us some time to kind of play around with um remote recording while he was up there in North Jersey and we managed to do it with not a huge break we we only had about a 6 6 7 week hiatus there after epi- ep- after episode 75 so that was our last show before 
we tapped the brakes, and then we came back with 76, like six, six or seven weeks later. I heard Michael David mentioning uh, an older episode. I think it was around 75 or 76. Do you remember a couple weeks ago when he was mentioning that? On um, must have been the Facebook or Twitter or something. I heard him talking yeah. about. He said he was listening to an old episode. Yeah. So there was a there was a big joke, and if I don't know if you've ever heard of the comic Sandman. I've heard of it. So Neil Gaiman does Sandman, and I've heard that name. Does he ever do any Batman? Did he? Um. He he may have done some mainstream comics, but he does. I'm almost certain of it. I'm just having a brain fart right now. But Sandman was his baby, and it was much loved. It it came out in like '92 or '93, and ever since it came out, I just had this preconceived notion that it was it was like a thinking man's comic. Like I didn't want any parts of it because it was all going to be uh, timey wimey and think like no, there's going to be like no truth. Like, no concrete storyline. It was all just going to be, like, F me in the brain. Kind of like goofy <laughs> goofy stuff that I would never be able to wrap my head around. So, the big joke going out on episode 75 was, like, if we ever come back, that's when we'll do Sandman. So, we kind of had to uphold our promise to do Sandman because episode 76, we eventually, you know, gathered the troops remotely to pick up the show again where we left off, so we had to do Sandman as the first thing. And I, and I loved it. If, if you guys never read Sandman, you absolutely should. It's amazing. I will totally pick that up. Um, and you were talking about remote recording, which is what we are doing now, and we actually picked our idea up from you. Have you always used the Google Plus format for your remote recording? Yeah, we always did. We always used the uh, Google Hangouts, and in the beginning, we we never went live. That was just something kind of ancillary that we just decided to do later on. We're like, well, we're recording it anyway, so why don't we go live with it on YouTube, and, and if people want to watch, they can watch. If not, you know, whatever, but it's just a little something extra that we put no effort into whatsoever. So... um while we were on our hiatus, you know, we were pretty convinced that Paper Keg was going to be over, which sucked because we, I mean, we love Paper Keg. We loved what it was doing. We loved how our, you know, our numbers were kind of growing each week, and we loved the uh, the feedback we were getting, even as, as whatever, however small it was. It was just, it kept us energized to keep doing it. So, uh, but we were pretty convinced that there was no way you would be able to get a quality podcast recorded remotely because you hear a lot of Skype casts or interview shows where it's just like crap on one end of the phone and and we didn't want to we didn't want to submit ourselves to that if it was going to mean if that was the only way we we're going to do paper keg so during um our hiatus which um, we already had some shows in the can before 75 came out. We were done recording. We were just like trickling out shows, the mm -hmm. rest of them. During that time, we we um, we started using Google Hangouts, and with our equipment plugged in, our mixers plugged into our computer, like I'm like I have now, we managed to basically replicate a darn near perfect sounding podcast with all of us recording all of our own audio and then combining it in a final mix final mix down before we would upload it to the hosting provider. And uh, our the, our first test recording was so good that we ended up recording a show out of it and that was and that's if you if you look in the uh, in iTunes or or Paper Keg show feed, it's seventy four point one. It's a Final Fantasy episode. And at that time we didn't tell anybody that it was a remote recording. We were just uh you know, we just played it off like we found time to do one more episode. And this is the episode that you know you got, and and we didn't hear any feedback like we were we were uh, so you know so into ourselves. We were just assuming that people were just gonna like poop themselves when they figured out that we like when we told them that we remote recorded it. We didn't get any kind of that feedback, but uh, we didn't get any complaints either. So they I mean, were none the wiser. That's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was really great because I was kind of like. You know, we love it so much, I kind of had to stay on Slim a little bit and, like, let's just try it before we admit defeat. Let's just try it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We wash our hands of paper keg and we had a good run for 75 episodes. That's it. 
and uh, it ended up working out. And here we are, 158 episodes total. So more, we've done more remote recordings than in-person recordings at this point, and uh, we're still going strong. I, oh, that's great. I I very much enjoy the show. Yeah, thank you. And I just discovered, I was I jumped in probably a couple episodes before the big 150. I don't know. I've probably been going two or three months now. I think, and uh, I've actually gone back and listened to uh, some of the old episodes as well. Um, mm, and you, you've influenced me to buy a, a few um, comic collections, so I thank you for exposing me to more things. And, uh, <laughs> I like to uh, go back and listen to old episodes too. That's scary. I would, well, personally, I wouldn't think about going back and listening to myself in old podcasts, but I, I that's great thank you for listening and and it's cool that you can listen and not be into comics you know what i mean you like comics but you're not that's not your thing no i'm not a comics guy but yeah yeah and you can still listen for the entertainment which i which we pride ourselves on completely that's what we try to do and if we would if we could never do that then we would probably stop doing the show yeah i I was discussing with michael on when he was on our eargasm uh, segment that you know, I'm not a comics guy, but I I just love your guys' banter and the relationships between everyone, and your interactions is great. And I think that's basically what makes a podcast. As long as the um, the hosts are, you know, entertaining and knowledgeable, then you can listen to them speak about anything, pretty much. Yeah, and that's what's so great about us. I mean, he, our relationship kind of has grown with the show. We, I, they knew that each other long before we ever started a podcast, but I, I kind of just met those guys right before we started doing podcasts together. And our, our relationships have grown so much that, you know, it just it it's just a unique thing that we have. It's like a perfect recipe for us to do the show, and it, it's just, it gets better and better every week, I believe. See, I, I picture you guys meeting, like, maybe Slim was at a, comic book shop at the King of Prussia Mall and you you were getting a, a lemonade from the Hot Sam's pretzel shop or something and, <laughs> and you just run into each other and start a magical relationship. Um, you had another member, Mark, who was uh, disbanded. Rest in peace, Mark. <laughs> Rest in peace, Mark. Uh, but So Mark is dead to the show. Yeah, Mark is a as a former co-host of the show. He was with us for the first 101 episodes, um, but he Mark is a, at the time, you know, he still kind of is, but he's settling down. He was a swinging single, and he loved comic books, but he's he had uh, more fear of a commitment than any of us because we we all had you know wives and kids and and routines, whereas he you know he he. It could be what is what's tonight Tuesday night. He might be at the bar right now, guys. Yeah. Because you know what, he's has that. God bless him. If I had yeah. that ability, I'd be there too, just like I was in my younger days. But um, it just got to be too much for him. He was uh, going through some uh, life changes and stuff like that at the time. So he, yeah, he's he stopped recording uh, at episode 101. But he was uh, he's will always be the fourth man of Paper Keg, even though he's not on there anymore. Will he ever be resurrected for a guest guest appearance? You know, I don't know. It's it's tossed around, but it's never talked about because what we, I think, even now, fifty five six episodes later, it's just a you know we're still trying to carve out and make Paper Keg as strong as it was as it, when we had Mark. So we're just, you know, kind of focused on the three of us doing the best job we can right now. So we haven't really talked about, you know, our first inclinations, like when can we get Mark back for, you know, a, a guest episode or whatever. And 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 if he ever brought it up, we'd love to have him back. But we we I think we're just on this train right now where we're gonna keep powering through the episodes we got, and maybe if something special comes up, we can we can have Mark on. But we it's not something we're focused on getting him back. Do you think he still listens to the show? Uh, no, I don't think he. Uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing against him. I, you know, it's. Just, I, I don't think he does, but I, I don't think he, you know, at the shows that he wasn't on when he was a host. I don't think he listened to any. He didn't so. listen to those either. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. Blake, you were probably just at the bar, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, you know, 
No. Blake. Not really. really. He was drinking some, what was that stuff? Georgia 420? What was it called? Sweet sweet Water 420. Oh, Sweet Water 420. Have you heard of that beer, Dale? No. It sounds, I want to say it sounds, Sweet Water sounds familiar, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a local Georgia thing. Okay. Maybe that's what, is Sweetwater the the uh, brewer? Yes. Okay. I think I have heard, I, then I have heard of that. Well, is the, uh, is the Paper Keg the first podcast you did, Dale, or was there more before that? No, well, the comics podcast. I mean, it's still in iTunes. The the links might be super broken, and I wouldn't listen to any of them. But that's what Slim and I kind of started when we committed to do a show together. He had another he had another podcast years ago called Nerdcast or Nerdcast Online with his co-host, and a couple times, just like. Michael and the Skyrim po- and the Skyrim podcast. I was just a huge fan, and I kind of I kind of became friends with the show when I let Slim know that I wasn't complete psychotic, and you know he could have me in his house to record. And I filled in a, a couple hosting gigs for the Nerdcast back in the day, and I got a taste for it. I was extremely nervous, and I probably I mumbled and I made way way too many jokes, and and I was nervous at the time. But at that point, we kind of like you know, shared openly our love for comic books and we commit we kinda tried to build this comics podcast with us two and then friends close to us and that was the first show that I could officially say that I had started and right. I was a part of from the beginning and then I obviously I fell off of it because my son was born and stuff like that. But that's where it began. That's where it all started. That's where it all started. Probably four Four to five years ago now, five years ago maybe, because my son is uh, will be turning four, so I was podcasting a little bit before him. Well, let's get into how did you find out about podcasts to start with? What were you? What were? You, what was going on in your life when you heard the word podcast and said, "Well, this sounds interesting. Let me look into this and see what a podcast is." I wanted an iPod, and I got an iPod, a classic. You know, when they were originally just the wheelie iPods, the classic style. With the uh, and the first one I had was the I forget it was the video iPod or the iPod Five it might have been called with the uh, the gorillas <laughs> cover <laughs> the with Demon Days is like the the album cover of the the pod of the iPod wrapper. All right. Um, but I knew at that point when I would go and try to, and sync my iTunes and stuff like that, I saw the podcast category and it was something that. I just started immediately taking an interest in because it was like there's these shows that people do and the only way I knew how to get them was to download them and sync them to my iPod. And I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. I was just like whatever iTunes was advertising. So like Ask a Ninja was one of the first ones, which is a video podcast, but that's like... That's one of my first podcasts because it was on like, you know, there was probably, I don't know how many podcasts were on iTunes at the time, but that was one of the ones. And, and, and there was a couple other ones, but I didn't really have a commute or time to listen to podcasts. But that's when my love of podcasting really started because it was just something different from radio, local radio. Right. Which was, it just blew my mind wide open that people could just have these specialized shows. And listen, you could download and listen to it, and it could be about any variety of topics, and right on your iPod. Whether you're, it, and at the time, it like it gave me an excuse to try to go to the gym. It gave me an excuse to try to take walks. It would do me anything. I'd do anything to try to listen because I couldn't listen at the time in my car. But it really got me out and about with my earbuds in. Uh, cool. That's a good point. I, I find myself doing the dishes way more than I uh, normally would. Just because podcasts have come into my life and working out and everything, they do provide a, a good source of uh, entertainment for when you're doing stuff you probably normally wouldn't enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's it's a perfect motivator for, uh, and, and I feel the same way about audiobooks too, but I just recently started listening to them about two years ago. But it's the same thing. Like, I, I want to keep listening, so I'm going to do some mundane crap around the house that my wife will give me high fives for. and <laughs> Double and score. Yeah, it'll keep me listening. Yeah. So, um, speaking of audiobooks, you also host a show called Book Jug. I am I'm a big fan of Paper Keg and Book Jug. You have these 
really good titles for these shows, <laughs> and uh, I'm not I'm not gonna lie and say that we kind of stole your format for Earwash. Um, wow, that's good. thank you. No, it's just well, Paper Keg makes you think of a comic book just exploding in your face, you know, like yeah. a powder, like a, like powder, a powder keg. keg. Yeah, yep. Exactly. And Book Jug, I love just more. It just reminds me of like a pirate drinking a jug of rum or something <laughs> on a <laughs> ship drinking. Or, I, I don't even know, but both of these titles are amazing. And uh, Book Jug is, I also enjoy it very much. It doesn't seem to be as regular as a uh, Paper Keg. But uh, Book Jug is also great, your audio book podcast. Yeah, Book Jug is a show I do with Jonesy, one of my co-hosts from Paper Keg. And a little little known fact for all the thousands of Book Jug listeners, uh, Book Jug it was the original name for Paper Keg. Oh, yeah. Great. And then it, that got shelved. It, Paper Keg just sounded like so much better. It was a better fit for comic books. And then um, last October... Or so, Jonesy and I had been listening to audiobooks pretty frequently, and we'd be just texting each other back and forth. And Jonesy's trying to like goad me into doing this as a podcast, and I'm like, well, I, I mean, I, I got paper keg, and I, I can't commit, I can't have commitments. I, like, I commit myself to paper keg. That's what I will get that out weekly. I promise to do that, but I don't have much time to do. A, uh, I don't want to commit myself to much more than that and, and end up just completely blowing it and never having time for it and putting it off if uh, putting it off and never doing it. So, okay, he's like, so we don't have to have a commitment. We'll, we'll do the book. We'll do the recording when, it's, when the book is done. And, and that's that. It, it like all came together because we were going through... I had like an epiphany. I'm sitting at work one day, and out of the blue, I'm just like, holy crap, book jug. I'm like, if we call the show Book Jug, we have to do the show. Like it's, it was like, it was like a sign. I'm like, Book Jug is there for the taking. We didn't use it before, but if, but it's almost like now that I know the name Book Jug exists, we have to do the show. We have yeah. to do it. So we That's did amazing. it. Yeah. So now it's, uh, you know, we've we've kind of committed ourselves to do, I guess you could say the classics. Or some more, more of the uh, prominent named books that we just never read in our lifetime. So we're kind of exploring that avenue now with Book Jug. We're going to pepper in some of our, some of the lesser known books that we might take an interest in. But right now, yeah, we do um, nine episodes out so far. So we're probably averaging like once a month, probably a little worse than that. But mm-hmm. I'm going to try to pick that up a little bit. And uh, the most recent episode was Master and Commander. I enjoyed that one, but I do have to admit my favorite one so far has been the uh, the 2001 Space Odyssey series. That was oh, uh, man. very enjoyable. And now, is that because the, the the show or the subject matter? Both. I think it was the first book jug that I listened to. Was it the first book jug episode? Yeah, that was, was the first episode. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, it's probably a little bit of both, but it being the first one that I listened to, mm-hmm. and it just kind of smacked me in the face. I was just like, wow, this is really good shit. Um, but I think you and Jonesy work really well together. Um, and I've been trying to get the hashtag Jonesing for Jonesy going every time there's a, a a new paper keg announcement or later this week we'll be recording or something. I always yeah. try to post something about Jonesing for Jonesy. But All right. Well, well I you to- hear that, everybody? Use the hashtag. I'm, I'm going to start using it too then. If you, wanna, if you really want to light this thing up, I can help. That's- Let's set his double socked feet on fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his hot, sweaty, pruned feet will just catch catch a blaze in that next step. Yes. Oh, Blake, what else we got here, son? Dale, if we were to get your iPod or iPhone or however you're listening to uh, podcast now, what will we find on yours? What are you subscribed to? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm opening it now. What do you see. listen on? I listen yeah. to my I listen on my iPhone. iPhone five. Yeah, my iPhone five. Do you enjoy the uh, iTunes app, or do you use a different app? No, I actually I use I use an app called Pocket Casts, or no, Instacast. My apologies. Instacast. Yeah, Instacast, and that's um. I've had since before iTunes had a legitimate podcasting app. Mm-hmm. 
So I've just kind of used Instacast ever since. And I and it's you know it's got its ups and its downs. I I think um, the podcast app from from Apple has come a way, a long long way from there not being one at all. But um, th- there's things about Instacast I like too. So I, you know there's good and bad of both. As with all things. But normally, see, I'm 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 hot and cold on all my podcasts. I'll go through phases where I'm not in the mood. To listen to them, um, but I subscribe to a lot just in case I want to listen to them. And um, I'm looking now. I mean, do you have a rough guesstimate about how many are actively uh, subscribed to, not necessarily listen to every week, but are subscribed to? Maybe about 21. Nice. 21 or so. Uh, three of which are my podcasts. <laughs> well, you got to buff up your own numbers. So yes, exactly. Exactly. Every computer, every you know, I picked up my wife's phone, and you know, she doesn't know, but I, she subscribed to Earwash now. <laughs> I, should, I, I should subscribe her also to like Paper Keg and Skyrim Addict and all those. Yeah, there you go. Use utilize an Apple ID. She won't even know. Get only five star reviews for everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I listen to um, well, a couple of video game ones. I listen to is uh, the Besties. I listen to, which is from Polygon. Uh, that's a monthly show. They used to be weekly. And if I'm not, sh- I'm not sure if you're familiar with the McElroy brothers of uh, like my brother, my brother and me. Oh, that's I've a, definitely heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, I didn't know the McElroy brothers. They're on the uh, Maximum Fun Network. Oh yeah, Jesse. You were ta- yeah, you were talking about Jesse Thorne, like uh, the first episode or something like that. Mm-hmm. We're talking about Jordan Morris, but yeah, and I'm I know Jesse. Yeah, he does the. Um, yeah, the. What is that comedy? Um, the weekend he does it has like a comedy retreat, you know, and he does the fashion podcast that he does, men's fashion podcast, and mm-hmm. he he talks always about the new sincerity. I've always liked that a lot because I think people are way too sarcastic these days. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesse Thorne, he's a he's a good guy to look into. Everyone out there. So they they incidentally two of so my brother, my brother and me is on the Max Fun Network. And two of the brothers on that podcast also work for Polygon, Justin McElroy and Griffin McElroy. And they're two that are on The Besties, which is a monthly video game show. And they basically talk about like the best games that came out the previous month. And when they were doing a weekly show, it was kind of bunk. It was, it was almost like there wasn't enough information or, or enough to talk about. So the monthly format they switched to was really good. I, I also listen to Friends List, which is a Polygon show, but I, I pick and choose that because that's a daily YouTube show, and they just throw the audio up on a feed for somebody. But they really like they'll just pick a little like a, a little tiny talking topic, and the show might be 12 minutes long, but that's nice because it's a daily show. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my buddy um, Don Garvey and Mike Connolly do a show called Echo Rift. And they are. I've heard, I've heard of that. What is? Maybe I've just heard you talking about it. But what is the yeah. Echo Rift? Echo Rift is. Um, uh, they talk about. They used to talk about. Well, they used to have like a whole, like theater of the mind thing going, where they lived in this fictional underground city, and and their whole lives were monitored. And at any time they did something like wrong, they could be atomized. But as long as they were like in this, uh, thirty minute. Lock. They they get put in this lock for 30 minutes while like shifts change because they were working in this underground city too. And for this 30 minutes, they would, you know, talk about a movie or comic, uh, or whatever that came out. And and then they recently just switched formats to where it's like just the regular guys, Don and Mike, in real life talking. And uh, and they do they do great analysis. They they're the ones that originally got me hooked on 2001. Because they just have a way of whatever subject matter they they're talking about, they have like such a passion for that you you just immediately appreciate whatever it is. Like I, the first Star Trek movie, for instance, I've only seen it once many many years ago, but to hear those guys talk about it, it, it could be my favorite movie because they they have such a passion and they make whatever they're talking about. They have a way to just make you love 
and it could be like anything from the the music or or little aspects of something you don't really think about a movie, and and they they find a way to make it amazing. So Echo Rift, uh, they come out twice a week now, and um, they're thirty minute shows, and it's it's fantastic stuff. So that usually I'll make a point to listen to Echo Rift before anything else, except. They see a like a lot. They see a lot of the blockbuster movies that come out, which I don't get to see, so I have to skip those episodes because it might be spoilerific or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I'm also a big fan, and uh, it hasn't happened for over a year, as far as I can tell. But you and Slim also did a show called The Flap. And uh, the other day when I was mowing, I listened to all eight episodes back to back to back. Oh my god! Uh, powered through them and. That is just sort of a, a peek into your guys' personal lives. And that in tandem with the paper keg just makes it an all-around, all-encompassing experience where you actually get to know the host as well. And it's, it's amazing. And I would like to, you know, of course, put my, throw my, ra- my hat in the ring of, you know, resurrecting that show every once in a while. I know everyone has young children and everything. But just to be able to get a peek into the, the lives and how people live, um, of the hosts of shows that you like to listen to, mm-hmm. you usually don't get that sort of um, that viewpoint into the background of how people are living. And that's just a, a really refreshing, just a really great way to get into know the hosts even more. You guys tell embarrassing, extremely personal stories, and it just makes me love you guys that much more. And do you do you ever envision the flap ever being a um, on and off thing, or is it dead for forever? Do you think? No, it, the flap is never dead. We have the problem with the flap is it's not as like because it's been so long since it's been released. The last episode, it's like well, what's another week? You know, like what's another week without one? It's been this long already, and, and that's a bad frame of mind to be in, but. Come like if we make if we try to pencil one in and it's like a random Monday night and come like five minutes we're supposed to record one of us will text you the other one and say you know what you want to try this tomorrow or something and it's not that we we love doing the show but I think there's something about I don't know it's without like a hard talking point to talk about it's hard to get the energy to just try to say some things and throw it together and ha- like people might want to listen to whatever we're blabbing on about but if unless I have subject material like me pooping my pants or getting my vasectomy you know it's like that's a subject I can I can wrap a story around and put it in a nice little wrapper like if we went if I was recording the flap after this with Slim we wouldn't have like a hard subject matter to talk about, you know what I mean? Like a, a finite thing. So it's kind of like it takes a, that much more energy to try to be our star way through something. And, and and the flap is coming back. Hopefully, it's going to come back soon. I was talking to him about it recently. I just got a mini boner. <laughs> See, and that's we encourage, we encourage boners of all kinds, mini, large, whatever. <laughs> I mean, because we love doing the show, and we love the absurd reaction that it gets. Like, people can't believe, you know, the stuff we say on that show. But it's easy because, you know, you're not face-to-face with anybody at the time you're talking about it. And I don't know. Like, it's real talk, you know what I mean? Like, anybody with a sense of humor, anybody who is a real person who who doesn't have these, like, walls drawn up around them... They're, they're, they're just going to get some enjoyment out of it, and they're going to be able to relate, relate to it in some way or another. And just three and four or five episodes later, people were still writing in, getting advice about their vasectomies, and saying, "Oh, how did you react to this?" And mm-hmm. I just thought that was great how, how just the one vasectomy episode kicked up so much listener interaction. Well, I can yeah, tell you and some that- stories. <laughs> We're getting into vasectomy hour. Nah, uh, we'll we'll save it for a different show. But ooh, that was right. thank God that was a one time deal. Well, you should go, you should definitely go listen to the lap episode about vasectomy. It was yeah, I'll, I'll, super entertaining. I have to check that out now. And and I was really proud of that because it opened up a forum for guys to talk about their vasectomies with other guys. Where where else are you gonna find like the comfort? 
what, the comfort? Are you going to find a chat room on MS? Like, how are you going to find <laughs> the ability to talk to other guys? I mean, if you have close personal friends and maybe a group of friends all got vasectomies, <laughs> you know, but otherwise, you're not going to find a high concentration of guys openly talking about their vasectomies. So I was really proud that I was kind of like able to bridge this gap and like open this line of communication between all of us by talking about it on a public forum and other guys are writing in like you know what I got mine too and that's and I didn't I don't know if I'm sterile yet or not because I haven't dropped <laughs> off my last sample but it was like otherwise this is all bottled up and you know bottled up and not taken to the lab but it's all like bottled up inside of them where they can't talk about it and if I if I can like be that avenue where guys can feel comfortable enough to talk about their vasectomies because it is a part of us that is a wonderful thing about podcasting is the communities that it can build and the um and a sort of like the looseness with which we can interact with each other. Yeah, and I think it's it's especially great because pe- the people who do podcasts and the people who listen to podcasts, we all have like a, a, a some kind of a sensibility. You know what I mean? Like a shared common sensibility that we kind of we get it on some level, and like so we're. You're right. The community aspect of it, there's not. A, it's not all complete insanity like it would be for just you know f- like a Facebook comments or something. Because it's all a shared thing that we all take pride in what we listen to, and we go out of our way to listen to something that's just not junk on the radio. So it's like we have this intelligence or this or that we're on the same wavelength with each other or something like that. It's a I know that you're. Society. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. I know that you work in um, some sort of technology background. Uh, do some of your coworkers also listen to podcasts that you know of? Yeah, yeah. As far as I know, the um, my coworkers listen to. I'm not so sure which ones they listen to, other than the ones we have in common, which um, would be Echo Rift for one is uh, is one we all listen to because that's how it got started is with my coworkers and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. Um, then we kind of branch off. Like one of my coworkers listens to a lot of the uh, Five by Five podcasts with uh, Dan Benjamin and Merlin Mann, like productivity podcasts and uh, more technology-driven podcasts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of podcasts I I listen to for a short time, but if it's like opinions on technology or something like that, I just can't jive with because. I'm you like unless it's really well done you're just it's mostly just like critical hypercritical something that I might take an interest in and and like they're either closed minded or it's going to be that for the sake of comedy or something that, and I just can't like I unsubscribe immediately something like that and I'm not saying Dan Benjamin's podcast are like that I don't know I just don't I just haven't spent any time listening to his podcast. I know he's got some really high quality podcasts on that network, so I, I just singled the him out and his network for no reason whatsoever. But I don't I don't listen to a lot of tech podcasts or productivity podcasts in my spare time. How about your lady? Is she a podcast listener? You know, she's the exact opposite on so many levels uh, that I think that's why we work so well together. But no, she doesn't listen to any podcast. She listens to the junk on the radio. Yeah, mine's and like so when we're driving together, I'm like, you know, we could try to listen to this latest episode of Paper Keg if you want. I've tried to get her to listen to Paper Keg before, and it's no, it does not go over at all. So, no interest in Paper Keg. I, I completely gave up. The only thing I do with the uh, the flap is I kind of give her a brief synopsis of maybe what I talked about, just to kind of stay guilt free. She's completely okay with it, and she doesn't care at all what I talk about. But I'm just like, you know, I talked about my vasectomy this week on the the flap, just so just so you know. And then like it's like my conscience is clear, so you don't get broadsided by somebody you work with or one of my old friends to say, you know, your husband talked about his vasectomy on the air. Yeah. But she doesn't care. She think like she whatever I do, you know, she knows I have good judgment and I'm not gonna like be a dink or something like that. So you mentioned a few podcasts, Echo Rift, um, Friends List, My Brother, My Brother and Me. Uh mm-hmm. can you just ramble off another couple of shows that you listen to semi regularly that you enjoy a lot that you would like to sort of mention on the show to try to expose other people to uh shows that you enjoy? 
I don't get to play Dungeons and Dragons ever anymore, but I still like to be in that world. And I've tried many, many Dungeons and Dragons podcasts because there are a lot out there of groups playing. None of them are which are any sort of quality whatsoever. And zero editing effort put into it, and they're just awful, and they they they're terrible. But like a beacon in the darkness, there is a podcast uh, called Crit Juice, and they are the most uh, inspiring. Like if you even if you've never played, it will inspire you to want to be a better role player. It inspires you to want to get out there and play and play on the level these guys do. And that's really comp- complimentary for these guys because the Dungeon Master is amazing. But the concept is uh, Crit Juice is they all, like all other, po- you know, half of the other Dungeon & Dragons podcasts on iTunes, they drink while they're playing, um, which could be, which is mostly disastrous in other shows. But the editing is so tightly controlled on here that it's that it's, your time is not wasted. So if a show is 45 minutes long, that could be a three-hour play session edited down to 45 minutes. Because in between you saying that you want to roll the dice and attack the monster, there's, there's 10 minutes of him hauling around while you're BSing and stuff like that. And some of that is left in for flavor in the show, but... A, most, of most of it's, it's not, not, and it's just, just an amazing D&D campaign that these guys are on. And I encourage anybody who has any interest in D&D to listen to Crit Juice because it's fantastic. Have you ever played D&D, Blake? No. No, I've heard a lot about it. I've heard it talked about on some other podcasts, but it's just something I've mm. never got into myself. Mm-mm. Oh, so um, Crit Juice, you recommend it very highly for your D&D exposure. And yeah, I have listened to the high. first, I think, five or six episodes of Crit Juice, and I also enjoy it very much. Um, what else is on your list of stuff that you uh, would like everyone else to uh, hear? I listen to, well, I selectively listen to, there's a podcast called Let's Talk Comics. And the uh, the comic, like I said, the comics podcast frontier is varied and wide, and it's like a wild west. Anything goes, but... This fella named Jim Viscardi, he used to work in the PR department of Marvel Comics. He does an interview show with the creators, and for the most part, he tries to keep it as high quality as he can. Honestly, there's some there's some episodes that I can't listen to because the quality is so bad. I just don't want to... I can't sink my time into listening to something where I have to interpret what they're saying because of a crappy phone connection, but... He really lets these creators talk in a in a decompressed environment, and you get to learn about these creators. And if you're if you're into comics at all, you might see a name you recognize, or you might. It's just cool to get this side of them that's not just their stories on a comic page. This is our life story. This is what they live and breathe, and what they believe in, and and what their thoughts are on indie comics and the big two and stuff like that. It's re- it's a really nice podcast that I just started kind of getting into myself. A couple months back, and uh, you know, I listen selectively listen here and there from you know from for names that I really know and admire, and then I'll kind of pull it back to names I don't know yet, and it just makes me love the people even more because of the fact that I didn't know them, and now I know them on this level of this like really nice interview. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Um, what sort of general function? You got into this a little bit, I think, but uh, what sort of general function do podcasts serve? In your life, you were saying that maybe they help you like exercise and stuff a little more. They served as a as a great irreplaceable entertainment value for me. Now, the way and the capacity I listen to them, I may not be uh, listening to them at the gym anymore because I can't go to the gym. But my commute makes up for any sort of time I can spend. So I I listen to my podcast on my commute, and it's just something different and it's something that you're seeking out and it's something that people are putting effort into making these shows to bring you entertainment and it's just a really great thing and it serves serves me it gives me peace of mind to know that I choose my to spend my time listening to like entertainment like that how long is your commute my commute's about an hour and 20 minutes each way 
Good lord, you got Yuck. a worse commute than I do. <laughs> yeah, it's it's rough. It could be rough. Yeah, I was going to ask you priority. Uh, you know, you have a book jug episode coming up. You would listen to your audio books first, and then fill in time with podcasts uh, after you finish the audio books. Yeah, say uh, you know, last week we recorded a book jug, so we decided what the next book is. But I will still take probably the next three to four days off, maybe a week, catch up on my, all my podcasts before I get back into a book again. Because usually when I'm listening to a book, I don't break it up. I try to listen to it all the way through so I can kind of remember what's happened. Sometimes on, an, on a nice afternoon when i got to have the windows down, I can't listen to an audio book. I'll just put music on or something like that. But Yeah. But if it's crunch time, like with Master and Commander, it was several weeks since we had gotten a book jug out, and you know, because I was home, I didn't have my commute and stuff, so I was like, I gotta knuckle down, get through this GD book so we can record. How'd you do that without a commute? Well, that's why I was so late. I I just um I had to wait. For, I waited for my commute, but that's why Master and Commander was late, later than it should have been. Mm -hmm. I don't like people listen to him and listen to audiobooks in bed and stuff. I don't normally do that. Mostly because that's when I read my comics for paper cake. <laughs> cram them in. Yeah. See, I always, um, you know, right before we record our show here is when I will listen to the podcasts that we've assigned each other to listen to because I feel I, I seriously listen to way too many podcasts, you know, an hour to work an hour back from work plus 10 hours a day at least, and if not 11 or 12 hours on long days. So I'm listening to a good 14 hours of podcast a day sometimes. Oh, my gosh. And um, that, I get confused what I have listened to, what I've heard. Like, So I need to listen to things that you know we're going to talk about on the show pretty much right before the show. I'll push stuff off. Mm -hmm. But uh, for yeah. your audio books, you have no trouble with your recollection at all? Yeah, I, I don't because I, I usually time it pretty well. So Jonesy and I will time it to where we finish the book at the same time. And then if we have finished a book, the following th paper keg session will record book jug right after paper keg. So it's not okay. too long after we finish the book. So we kind of determine when we're going to record when we finish the book. And plus it sounds like you guys discuss the book while you're reading slash listening to it. So it's like you're bouncing ideas off of each other. Said you were texting back and forth about it and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do that. It's it, we keep that to a minimum though. But it has to be. I mean, can't help. You know, if our jaw drops, if we're at a part, or we got to think about if we're gonna bring something up in the show, we'll we'll text yeah. that back and forth. But that our texting has went way down since starting Book Jug. Yeah. Has he ever spoiled anything for you that you've been like, dude, I haven't got there yet. <laughs> no, it got I. I can't remember what it was, which one, but it got close on one of them, but he didn't, thankfully. Uh, Blake, is there any last uh, podcasting questions that we uh, have to ask Dale this evening? Were there any episodes of Paper Keg that, if you go back and look at the numbers, were there any episodes that were just absolutely off the charts that you know going back that was your number one most downloaded episode? Yeah, um, do you have people who come in and out, or is it just mainly your regular audience? Honestly, I don't. I we don't know that because our regular audience is a vocal. Well, the, no, that's a, that's a wrong way of putting it. Our vocal audience is the only audience we know about, um, and which is great because we love people when it when people interact with us. But we, I mean, we had the numbers are there to say that there are people that we don't hear from that listen, but I don't know how deep that goes. I think our most our most Downloaded episode is Infinity Gauntlet. I can, I think I can still say that with the utmost insurance. I forget what number that is. It's probably in the 60s or 70s. I'm not even sure if that was a strong episode or not. But Infinity Gauntlet, I guess, you know, brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Batman Hush was another huge one, and uh, Andrew, you listened to that, but I did. I mean, that's it, Blake. If you if you just want a story, Batman Hush. It's a 12-issue arc, and it's 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 some of the best Batman stuff you'll ever read. I'll take you for a ride. That's Jim Lee on art. You don't you don't get any better. No, it's 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 mesmerizing. The the mm -hmm. butts on Catwoman and Absolutely. Harley Quinn. Their their butts are just so luscious in that book. 
Sorry to sound like a gross perv. Well, uh, you've been very informative, and uh, we appreciate you very much coming onto the show, Dale. Uh, would you like to say your Twitter name for everyone out there, and maybe uh, where they can find Paper Keg and Book Jug? Yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm on Twitter at uh, Dale underscore A, and I do Paper Keg, Book Jug, and The Flap. You can find us on iTunes. You know, paperkeg.com will have uh, Paper Keg episodes, show announcements, uh, big get-together come in July 19th. And uh, if you're in the Philadelphia area come, on, area, come on out to Barcade. It's our third annual. And, uh, yeah, so paperkeg.com is where you can get all the episodes or links to iTunes, links to, our, you know, the individual Twitter accounts or something like that. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate, really appreciate you guys having me on. This is fantastic, and I love, I love the concept of the show. Actually, when I was listening to my uh, flap binge the other day, I heard you and Slim talking about doing the exact same thing that we are doing right here, right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, that's uh, it's great. So I we already I already love the concept, but I know that uh, I we what we had in mind would be totally inappropriate because we would just start rattling off awful shows that have no business doing podcasts, but. And it's time, man. So I don't have any time. Yeah. Have any time. That's one thing I did want to avoid with the show was just trashing shows that we disliked. I, I just wanted to kind of highlight shows that we enjoyed instead of picking on people because when you start getting critical, you know, you assume that you're doing everything better than everyone else, and that just can't be. So. Right. Yeah, absolutely, and it's it's so easy to rip something down and and get on that. That if if it's something that gets you down. Don't even waste time talking about it. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Why, why put energy to promote the negativity for and for a laugh? And I, I mentally, I used to do that paper keg in the early days, and it's just, I've, I guess I've evolved. I'm a better human now. But <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, talk about the stuff you love, and and for paper, like for me and paper keg, promote the comics that you love, and and get the word out. Don't don't spend time trashing a creator or an artist. It's just not worth the time. Yeah, exactly. I, I support that wholeheartedly. Well, Dale, um, we thank you for being on, and everyone, please follow Dale on Twitter at Dale underscore A, and look up his shows at paperkeg.com. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you for being on the show. How about that Dale Andrews, huh? Oh, man. Pick myself up off the floor. Gotta gotta sweep myself up. I'm a, I'm, I've been a pile. That uh that interview went a lot longer than what I actually put into today's show. I think I cut out about 45 minutes of audio out of that. But there's a lot of good information I cut out. A lot of it maybe wasn't necessarily about podcasts, and that was why I cut it out. But I'm gonna release the full episode. Probably a week after this one goes up, I'll put up the full in, the full interview with Dale from Paper Keg because there's still some good stuff in there, especially comic book stuff. You'll see his insight on comic book and I uh, and a ton of junk about Dungeons and Dragons. That's right. Well, Dale, if you're listening, thank you for for coming on the show. We really we really appreciate it. I'm sure we've said it a million times, but thank you, thank you, thank you. And everybody, go to paper uh, paperkeg.com and buy a shirt. Yes, Listen their shirts are uh, really awesome. Great design. All right. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of the show. You want to do the dunk tank? Let's take a dip in the dunk tank. You can take these shows right to the bank of wise investment in the dunk tank. My God, it's so wet in here. I need to dry out for a while. Yeah. I just want to, just want to sit nude in front of a fan. Don't forget to bring a towel. Dunk tank. What I make you listen to? Uh, the dunk tank this week. Um, I was assigned to listen to "We're Alive." Um, what's the subtitle? A zombie survival a guide. Survival. Shoot, what, what's it called? A we're uh, alive. Such, a story I'm of such survival. a horrible. We're alive. A zombie story of survival. The word "zombies" in quotation marks. I guess they the zombies don't really exist. They were letting everybody know it was a zombie themed podcast. I think. Yeah, we're alive. I'm loving it. I'm. My only problem is I keep trying to download it 
at work, and for some reason this specific podcast doesn't like my work's crappy uh, Wi-Fi. Uh-oh. So um, I've only made it through uh, Chapter 3, Part 1, so I'm very fresh still, and you said, what, there's almost 50, 47, 48 chapters. Right. So I've got a good long while to go, but I'm I'm enjoying the story so far. It's really good. Um, let's see what has happened last. Uh, they're in an apartment building with some guy named Bill up on the top floor, and they just got access to the roof to start planting a garden, and they've got, they found this whole another group of people came into the building with this kid with celiac disease who can't eat any gluten. Uh, it's just like, oh, oh my yeah. lord. Oh my know, lord, man. this is this is a podcast for modern times. If someone had celiac disease and couldn't eat gluten back in the day, they would just let that person die. Were people even allergic to gluten back in the day? I, I'm sure they were, but I'm sure it was like Paul Pfeiffer from the Wonder Years. Like they had to be a, one of those weirdo kids who was just allergic to everything and couldn't eat anything and couldn't have any fun. Right. But a lot of people claim to have celiac disease now, but I, you know, I also. I'm not. I don't want to call into question anyone's allergies because who am I to say what they're allergic to or not? I think people claim a lot that they're allergic to gluten. Just, I don't know. I think it's a little, maybe a little iffy on that subject. But who am I to say? I, I don't have any allergies to gluten. I love gluten. I will eat pizza crust all day long. I'll eat pizza crust as a sandwich between yeah. two pieces of bread. <laughs> I'll, I'll take. Two pieces of pizza, and then go get that new KFC sandwich. That's the fried chicken is the bread, and the double use down. The, or use the double down as bread for the pizza, and then put a burger in between it. That's how I eat. That's a slice of heaven. Yes, uh, but we're alive. I'm loving it. If you like an amazingly well produced podcast. We're Alive is for you. It is not a live show. It's not spontaneous. Everything is meticulously laid out. Uh, the It's very well acted. And these, you know, the sound effects are amazing. The actors are really great. The narration is perfect. I'm amazed that you said that someone isn't there, that they record over the phone. I know. Michael? That... <sighs> That's ridiculous. The main character of the whole story, pretty much. Isn't yeah, the narr- the narrator and the <laughs> and the main character, he's recorded via telephone. That's amazing. You can't even tell. It's it's so well done. It, they just must have a magician behind the wheel of their production. Right. It's if you crazy. check out their their website too, they show some of the behind the scenes of how they record the sound effects. It's pretty amazing too. So I recommend if you if you like the show, then. Check out the We're Alive webpage and look at some of the YouTube videos of how they record some of the sound effects. Because yeah. not all of them are just the ones they found online. Most of them are ones they're actually creating themselves. So. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I pulled it up. They're uh, they're at www.zombiepodcast.com. That's right. If you want to go I knew check that. it what out, what I say, We're Alive.com. That's oh well, I see. I I typed that into the search bar and it brought up. So it redirects. It redirects oh, to it. They they bought the other one too. So good, good, good. Yeah. No, but I'm I am all aboard. Um, we're alive. I'm not sure that I will listen to, you know, in long intervals. Like I'll you know do like three episodes in a row and then let it sit for a few days or a week and then come back and listen to another chapter. You know what I mean? Because it's broken down mm-hmm. into three segments per chapter. So I think that's pretty good. It makes it about an hour per chapter, maybe a little hour, 20 minutes, because they're a few minutes over 20 minutes sometimes. And um, yeah, I, I endorse it wholeheartedly. And if you're interested at all in not just zombies, but survival stories, I'm a survival story junkie. When I was a kid... I used to get the uh, Reader's Digest from my grandparents' house, and I used to love the stories of survival, like, oh, I was attacked by a bear and had to live in a cabin for a week until I was rescued, or uh, I was in a boat out at sea and a shark attacked my boat and I had to find a way to survive out at sea for a, you know an extended period of time, or I got trapped in a snowstorm in my cabin and an avalanche surrounded us, and what are we going to do? I just I used to eat that stuff up. So I love these survival stories. Right. And uh, and We're Alive fits right into that. I really like it a lot. Thank you for the suggestion. Oh, yeah. So does it go on the, does it get the two uh, ear wash bulbs of approval? 
It does. I'll, I'll give it two lobes of approval. The um, yeah, I, I'm a regular. I've got it subscribed, and I've I've been downloading them in chunks of about probably two chapters at a time. I download about six episodes at a time and get through those, so I don't you know fill up my phone with space before I'm ready right. to listen to them. You know, is that the first audio drama that you've listened to? Actually, when I I used to be a radio host. Um, back at WECI 91.5, 91.5 FM Richmond, Richmond's public radio, WECI, from the campus of Earlham College. And and when I was in college in Richmond, Indiana. And uh, during the summers when things got slow and we're trying to fill time, I found an old reel-to-reel machine in the back of the radio station. So I would play um, the old sci-fi radio adventure X-1. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. No. But, uh, it was really awesome, and I played uh, the crime drama Dragnet. It was an old radio drama from back in the uh, 40s or 50s, I think. So those were the first ones that I ever was exposed to, really. But as as far as a podcast is concerned, this is this is well. First of all, this is much better, well done. Like the the Dragnet and everything is cool, but you can tell it's got lots of old tape hiss, and actually, which is gives it a nice ambiance. It's really right. nice to listen to, but. Uh, this this is a very well done show as well, and you can tell it's done in the vein of those old radio shows. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my first podcast of an audio drama. Was it yours? How many audio dramas have you listened to or been exposed to? There was a couple. I'm trying to remember what the names of them were. There were a couple more that I listened to before I found We're Alive. Oh wait, sorry, I just remembered another one. Go ahead. Yeah, I had some Leviathan Project or something like that. I think it's called Leviathan is in the title. Uh, it was similar; had you know different voice actors. It had sound effects, stuff like that. And I listened to all of it. I need to go back and see what that was. I'll put it in the show notes. I need to find the title of that one because that one was pretty good too. The episodes were longer than uh, We're Alive, but uh, I think. Overall, like length, that was about the same. It's just each individual episode wasn't broken down into twenty-minute segments. I think it was each one was just an hour at a time. Okay. I want to say it's called the Leviathan Project, but I'll look it up. Was it one it long it. story, or just a? Uh, do they just break after an hour, or are they like was it broken into chapters, or similar to War Alive, or do you remember it all? Yeah, it was similar. I think it was broken down into different chapters, and you get one chapter per. You know, per release hour. date. Yeah, per hour yeah. was one chapter, and it was it was pretty good. I have to, like I said, I have to look that up again and make sure I get the title right on it. I want to say it was the Leviathan Project. I'm interested in that word Leviathan. Do you, by chance, know what that means off of the top of your head? Yeah, like a underwater some kind of sea monster, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. According to Wikipedia, Leviathan is a sea monster referenced in the Tanakh or the Old Testament. Oh, it's a biblical thing. Okay. They spent a lot of time, some time underwater in that show, too. So yeah. The word has become synonymous with any large sea monster or creature. Okay, that makes a little sense because uh, when Peter Benchley was writing Jaws, Leviathan Rising was one of the um, titles that he was kicking around before he just settled on Jaws. Cool. That's awesome. Now, um, But I was saying I, I thought of another um, audio drama that I've listened to. And there is one that revolves in a Skyrim universe called Keeg's Quest that oh, I that's right. that I used to listen to. I haven't checked in with it in a good long while because he took a he took a long hiatus because uh, I think he actually got a real job in the voiceover world. So, you know, congratulations to him. But uh, he just started that back up again. So I need to check back in with Keeg's Quest and see what Keeg is up to in the in the world of Tamriel. Yeah, he said the host on that show said he was going to take a break. He was putting out, I think. Each show was maybe, what, 45 minutes? Yeah, they're pretty long. And then he had a, a what do you call it, a campfire chat or whatever it is, where it's just him talking about what he wants to do with the show. And uh-huh. he would take big breaks, and he would let everybody know, look, the show's not dead. You know, there's just stuff going on in my life. I think at one time his mother was sick. Oh, he no. Did a, the voiceover stuff. And then he decided he was going to start breaking the show up into segments, kind of like We're Alive. Well, he put out two segments like that, maybe 20-minute segments, then I haven't heard anything else from that show in probably two or three months now. Oh, no. I hope everything's yeah. all right. 
But that's a good one too if you like Skyrim. King's Quest is, is pretty good. And that's another audio drama. Yes, I, I have enjoyed it, especially if you're into, you know, fantasy role-playing or specifically Skyrim. But if not, it's also just a cool fantasy, you know. Right, there's a lot of sci-fi stuff that gets, gets mixed in in that story, so. Yeah. There's some Star Wars references, Star Trek, some other stuff kind of all jumbled together in there. Well, see, I think the last one I gave you, too, before, it was either the feed or echo chamber last time. It's gotten all jumbled but I think I had you listen to the 10 minute podcast too. Yes, sir. 10 minute podcast. What do you um, think of the 10 minute podcast? The 10 minute podcast is wonderful. Um, uh, can you remind me of the hosts names again? There's, um, Will, Will Sasso. Will Sasso. That's right. Will Sasso is, uh, the, the butter on the bread of that podcast. Um, and at least in my opinion, I, I really like Will Sasso. You know, he's Curly from the uh, the reboot of the Three Stooges movie. Um, but he's just, he's really creative and super funny, does lots of good voices. I what? Who do you like? What Do you have a favorite host? No, Will. I think Will's my favorite. Yeah, he, he just must be the, the main attraction. But uh, also, Chris D'Elia, I believe his name is. Right. Who was in... Uh, man, I don't even remember. He's got a new show on right now, but had an old show two years ago that my wife absolutely loved. I think she just thought Chris D'Elia was hot, personally, because <laughs> you know, it kind of looks like a, a greaser dude a little bit. All right. Yeah. Um, and I just <laughs> I actually have a funny, not funny, but uh, I was talking earlier about the Jen Kirkman, um, the I Seem Fun Diary of Jen Kirkman podcast. And she actually went off, I think, two or three episodes ago on Chris D'Elia for some Uh-oh. stuff he was saying on Twitter about the, uh, what was that movement? The All Women Now? All Women yeah, Yes, All Women? Is that what it was called? I don't even remember. But there was this hashtag on Twitter about, you know, uh, feminism and female rights, which I support wholeheartedly. But he was going off on something, and I don't remember, but <laughs> they had beef at least uh, Jen Kirkman had beef with what he was saying. Uh-oh. And so I thought it was really funny that um, you were pitching that episode. And so I listened to the 10-minute podcast. And then like I went and listened to Jen Kirkman's podcast. And she was complaining about the guy for the podcast that you had mentioned to me earlier in the week. So I was like, wow, it's a small freaking podcasting world. Even though there's probably hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there now. But it's just funny that uh, we happen to be listening to two podcasts that were kind of referencing each other that week you just have podcasts colliding all over the place That's oh really man it's a it's a universe out here comets collide podcasts all over the place so with it being a 10 minute commitment would that be something you'd listen to all the time oh yeah no not a problem i actually when i was mowing <clears throat> um this week i put like i don't know probably eight or ten of them in a row and just listened to a bunch I think three you told me to listen to. There was an Arnold Schwarzenegger one where Will Sasso right. put on his best Arnold Schwarzenegger um, impression. And um, he w- it was one where Arnold Schwarzenegger was writing love poems. Yeah, and, the love poet. And the love poems all ended with the line from one of his movies. And right. it was just really funny that he was writing these love poems just so he could work in pretty much plugs for, you know, like Terminator or uh, uh, Twins. I think there was a Twins <laughs> reference in there. And I, I, it was really funny. And uh, Will Sasso does a pretty good Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a pretty talented guy. Love the stuff he does. So um, I will also give a thumbs up to, um, or an earlobe up. I don't know how we're... What our what our scale is over here at Earwash yet? We've yet to discuss that, but uh, I will also throw my support behind the ten minute podcast. I I got a few good chuckles out of that, but uh, let's see. There was the Arnold Schwarzenegger one, and then the um, excuse me if this is offensive, the sassy black lady one. Well, Sheena, Shana, Shana. 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 Yeah, yeah. Think of her. I that's another Will Sasso gem. I thought <laughs> I thought she was pretty funny too. I, I thought that was really good. And um, you got Boyf. Yeah. I, th- I thought that was also pretty funny how they were kind of trashing on that girl on uh, Photo Bucket or Instagram or whatever website yeah. they were talking about. Yeah, th- that's really good. Now, I, I 
I'll support that show wholeheartedly, and I'll uh, I'm already subscribed to it. Cool. Yeah, I think I wish it came out more often though, since it's only ten minutes. You think that they would get together and record, you know, once a week for an hour, and then break each of those up, and so you could have an episode every day. I think they do. Because if you listen to some of them, like the newest episodes, Chris D'Elia's not on the last two, so I know they recorded those two together Yeah. the same day. So they, I think they may do, well, I'm not sure how, several at least, while they are all have the opportunity while they can. I know they've mentioned it on one of the shows before that they'll do three or four in one night. Yeah. And then just kind of spread them out. I think you get two a week. Yeah, mistaken. it seems like if I look at the release schedule here, it's like they'll do June 3rd, then June 5th, then June 10th and 12th, and then 17th and 19th. So yeah, they. it seems like each week you get one probably like on a Tuesday and Thursday or something like that. Yeah, it looks like Tuesday and Thursday is their usual release schedule. But yeah, so it looks like they just record maybe two episodes a week, or maybe they edit them down or talk. But I think they should go ahead and do it every day, you know? Why oh, yeah. not? Just record for an hour and break it up into five separate episodes. Yeah, ten minutes is not a not a big commitment to listen to. Usually, I, it's, sorry, go ahead. Usually, I'll take and when I see there's a new episode of that, just throw it on and usually listen to it first first thing that morning because it's played and over with before I really ever get out of my neighborhood. So on my way to work. Yeah, that must be maddening to listen to them as they come out. That's another one that I'm glad that I'm not, you know, caught up with that I get to listen to a back catalog of because just 10 minutes of a show, you know, like you you just wet my my appetite. That's all you've done there. You, I want more. You can't just you can't just get me all hot and hot and bothered and then leave me in the dust, honey. You got to finish me off. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'm so crude. <laughs> No, but uh, I throw my support behind 10-Minute Podcast. Uh, I know you do, too, so that's another one. We'll get two lobes up. All right. The list is getting bigger, which I need to – I need to, I talked about it, and I need to actually go to the website and update the page to include all the shows that we've shared with each other and we're now subscribed to because – Yeah, and, and specifically the ones that we both support now, yeah. Exactly. Did you by chance go back and I sent you a list of the shows that Michael had – mentioned in his interview did you by chance it's it's on the to-do list i put some of them okay. on the show notes for that show but now that you sent me the list i need to go back and just update everything that he he listened to and recommended yeah and we'll go ahead and get dale's on there too i'm sure he mentioned a good number of podcasts i tried to write them all down during the interview but i'm sure i missed yeah, a I couple did. i did too i was taking notes while he was while he was talking yeah but you know i just got so mesmerized by his buttery voice that I just get all slathered up and, and can't handle myself anymore. <laughs> would, Couldn't hold the pen anymore. Would, would lose control of the pen. It's too buttery. Let's see. You had me listen to... Let's see here. Let's start with the Joe Rogan experience. I think you had me listen to episode 473 with Jim Jeffries. It's a marathon of a show, that the Joe Rogan show. He likes to put out the long ones. Yeah, it is. I downloaded that one and started it today, as a matter of fact. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll throw it on and listen to it real quick. Because we had talked earlier today about doing the show tonight. And I was like, whoa, I need to listen to something. And I think we only rushed this show because of the holiday. So, yeah. anyway, put it on, got it playing, and I looked, and it said two and a half hours. And I said, whoa, that's a big show. It's a little but, bit of difference from the 10-minute podcast, huh? Exactly. As I, Jim Jeffries is his guest. I like I like Jim Jeffries. He I seems, love uh, Jim Jeffries. Yeah, he's a pretty cool dude. As far as the whole show in particular, I feel like it's well produced. Joe Rogan, what does he do? What is what is Joe Rogan? Well, he like I'm, pr- Joe? his his main profession now. Well, it, it was stand up comedy for a long time and an actor on a uh, news radio TV show. But he is also a big um, MMA. Um, announcer. Oh, okay. He, he he hosts. I don't know if it's what's the other one. There's MMA and Ultimate Ultimate Fighter the Championship. Yeah, I'm not sure which he is a part of, but he is uh, one of the TV hosts for either MMA or UFC. Well, I know he had a big deal with uh, what is it on it, which they do a lot of like herbal supplements. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his sponsor. Yeah. And I've taken the Alpha Brain stuff before. 
that oh, yeah? on itself. Yeah, through a different the Rooster Teeth podcast, they were pushing the uh, the Alpha Brain product. Did you notice any difference? Yes. Wow. It was playing games like Modern Warfare Three. My reaction times and stuff were a whole lot better. My focus was a lot better. I didn't ever did take it at work. I just would wait till it was game time, and then the recommended dosage was two. I couldn't really tell that two made any difference, so I would take four at a time. And uh, yeah, the reaction time was a lot better. I was killing people. My my problem was by the time I'd see somebody on the screen, to actual move the cursor over to them to start shooting was so slow that usually I was dead before I could get it over to them. But after taking Alpha Brain, this isn't, they're not our sponsor, so this is just... We're just two dudes for, talking here. This is my plug for trying it. But uh, you know, after taking it, it was a lot, a lot faster, a lot better. So it, it does what it says it does. I'll give it that. So do you, you don't think any of that could be attributed to the placebo effect at all? You, you'd think that was actually some sort of chemical change in your brain? Yeah, you feel a little different. You feel like you're zoned in. And you can it's one of those things you can tell when it's wearing off too. So you can <laughs> this the you, crash hard. Right. No, it's no. It's curling in the corner. Oh no. I need need more pills. They say it can cause some lucid dreaming, which I never had anything like that. I think it's because I stayed up so late playing games that by the time I'd have shut everything down it was just bedtime. I just skipped the whole REM level of sleep and was just in coma phase. But yeah. uh yeah, it's it's I forget how much it is a bottle, but if you're a gamer it's worth checking out. I don't know how it would do with like crunch time in college having to write a paper or something like that, but yeah. It helped with, with video games definitely. Do you ever get that thing where after you played games for too long you close your eyes and you go to sleep and you you're still playing the game behind your eyelids? Yes. You and what was the, the worst? I don't know if you ever played, uh, like, Rock Band or Guitar Hero. Oh, man, you just see the, the notes still falling at you still. You'd look around, it looked like everything else or in the room was still move, like moving up because you're watching everything on the screen move down for so long. Yeah. All the furniture was moving up towards the ceiling. God. Sorry, I when I was playing lots of Red Dead Redemption, I would just close my eyes and I would hop off my horse and skin a, skin a deer or something. <laughs> I, was just... I used to be bad with Warcraft about when I wasn't playing, my mind was constantly, well, when I get back on, I need to do this, I need to go find these couple of things so I can, I need to go find this ore so I can blacksmith this belt. My mind was just constantly in Azeroth, in Warcraft, just continuously for like two years, so... Yeah, that's, that's finally... how I've been with Skyrim for the last year. I'm like, man, I need to go get some more snowberry so I can concoct a potion of health and or whatever. It's... It's. I've only recently started thinking of other things. Skyrim has been an all and you know consuming force in my life recently. Right. Well, it's, it makes you happy, and when you're doing mundane things like work or mowing that you can just kind of put yourself in auto drive and do, then it gets your mind back on something that you enjoy. That's why I listen to podcasts so much while I'm at work. Just something to bring some joy to my life while I'm in that awful tractor factory. I was just about to say uh, that I get to thinking about my character in Skyrim too much, and then I forget to pay attention to the podcast I'm listening to, and I have to backtrack 15 minutes on the podcast and re-listen to stuff, because I was like, oh crap, I've been thinking about my character, and I missed, <laughs> the, I missed the last 15 minutes of whatever anyone was talking about, or a whole episode of the 10-minute podcast. Right. <laughs> well, the okay, we're getting getting we're getting into... Game chat. We're getting off the rails. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. Joe Rogan. Uh, Joe Rogan is. I like the show, but two and a half hours is a big commitment for me. I still didn't completely finish the Jim Jeffries episode. I will finish it because I like what I'm hearing. But that may be a show that. Let me listen to a couple of the new ones. See how the guests are that are on. But that'll probably be one that if if I do subscribe to it, I may. Is it one show a week? Uh, as far as I know, uh, I have to warn you that I am not a regular, regular listener. Just if I n recognize a guest that I like, because I like stand-up comedians a lot. So if there's right. one on that I like, then I'll download the episode. I am not an actual regular 100% subscribe to the Joe Rogan podcast. But I check in with him every couple of weeks, and then I'll download a couple episodes if I recognize the guest that I like. Right, and I may do the same thing. I just don't know 
I mean, I'll, if I listen to more of it, I'll get to know more about who Joe Rogan is and and what he's about. But at two and a half hours, it's just a big commitment for me. And today, I kind of broke that one up with some other podcast. Mm-hmm. I listened to 30, 45 minutes, would pause his, move to something else, and then come back to it. So if I was to subscribe to it and listen to every episode, it'd be one that, if it came out early in the week, I'd probably listen to it over several days and you know uh-huh. divide it up instead of just trying to listen to it all in, in one chunk. Well, I remember you saying that uh, usually by Thursday afternoon or Friday, you're, you're looking for some time filler. So I figured that might be a good one to help exactly. you out by, by the end of the week. And um, I even think that uh, Jim Jeffries in this episode says something near like the two and a half hour mark. Like, man, we've been doing this a long time. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> so you also had me listen to Doug Loves Movies. More importantly, episode the episode from May 18th with Joey Coco Diaz. What'd you now, think? When I heard Joey Coco Diaz speak, I had this image in my head of what he looked like. I didn't know who he was just just by the name alone. But I had this image in my head, this gruff, you know, maybe not Italian guy, but he's going to look Italian, maybe slick back hair, starting to silver a little bit. Before we started the show, I had to do a Google image search to see what he looked like, and it was I'm pretty so much glad you on. did. It That's was spot hilarious. on. And yeah, like, uh, man, he looks just like he, he looks just like he sounds. Yeah, he is a 400 pound Cubano man. Actually, he's a uh, he's not from Italy, but because he grew up in the uh, New York, New Jersey area, he does have that typical, not just the voice, but the whole attitude. Right, of, you know of. That whole sort of uh, 1960s, 70s New York, get out of my fucking face sort of thing. <laughs> I love him. He, I just think he is just the bee's knees. I think he's really funny. And he has his own podcast right, called the, right. the, the Church of What's Happening Now. And if uh, anyone out there happens to listen to that uh, Doug Loves Movies episode and liked the Joey Coco Diaz, what, what impression you got from him, go ahead and check out The Church of What's Happening Now. That's another one that I check in with, not every every week, but uh, you know, every couple weeks I'll go and look and see uh, what's going on with Joey, because I really love him, and his sidekick, who he lovingly calls the Flying Jew, is, uh, <laughs> this, his, his buddy, Lee Saeed, and they're, they're a really good couple, uh, a couple of hosts. Lee's a he can sound really nervous on the mic, which is really funny because Joey is just relentless because Joey's the most aggressive and self-assertive person that you'll ever meet in your life, and he just rips into Lee all the time. But it's all good-natured, and it's all really fun, and it's very cute the way they interact together. So check out the uh, the Church of What's Happening Now as well if you, if you uh, had any interest in Joey Coco Diaz. As far as the rest of the show, <clears throat> I did like it. You, on, on the last episode, you explained the games a little bit and what they play. On this particular episode, some of the guys on with Doug Benson didn't seem to exactly... Joey Coco, for one, didn't exactly seem to know the rules to the game. So Yeah, that being, was his first time on the show, yeah. So being, being a first-time listener to that show, with the guests on the show also not really being sure the game was kind of confusing, but... Overall, I liked it, and I'm starting to get this th- this thing now with shows that are produced in front of a live audience. The interaction that uh, Doug Benson has with the audience is really good. Uh, apparently, he has them bring in just random shit into the <laughs> into the show. <laughs> I think somebody brought in a kite, and he was like, "Yeah, exactly." The door yeah. When they're just bringing this shit in, what kind of reaction yeah. securities give? You know, but uh. It's it, it goes into the. I will listen to more of it. I, I want to hear a couple more episodes before I make a final judgment. As as far as it will it be a full time subscription or not? Mm-hmm. But I, I definitely do like it enough to check out some more episodes of it. Well, if uh, you want a couple of suggestions of guests to look up on his feed who who know the rules and who are also extremely funny, I can give you a couple suggestions to, just off the top sure. of my head. Uh, Paul F. Tompkins is very aware of all the rules and is very good at the games. So is Sam Levine, if you know um, the TV show Freaks and Geeks. He played Neil, one of the geeks on Freaks and Geeks. 
And uh, he is also extremely good at the show. And every once in a while, Leonard Moulton, who the Leonard Moulton game is named after, he All will right. also appear on, on Doug Loves Movies, which is really funny, actually, because Leonard Moulton also, he, he has no idea how the games are played. And the game is named after him, but it's just really funny to hear Leonard Moulton on the game. Right. Yeah, I kept wondering, who is Leonard Moulton? Does he review movies? Who is this guy? Yeah, he's a an old movie reviewer. My dad used to purchase the Leonard Moulton movie guide when I was a kid. There is a oh, new wow. version came out every year and we would buy it. And I just that's I think that's one of the reasons I like movies so much is just cuz he would have that and I would just sit and flip through the movie guide and read basically a synopsis of the movie and kind of look at the actors and you know, it's it was starting, you know, that was one of my first exposures to pop culture was my dad buying that book and bringing it home for for us to read. Well, what have you got for me this week to check out? Um, so for the dunk tank for this week, um, I have before the show I was asking you what your favorite scene in Star Wars was, right? And uh, you gave me a scene from Return of the Jedi, which uh, yes. you'll you'll find out why I couldn't let you have a a scene from Return of the Jedi. Uh, what I have for you this week is the Star Wars Minute. Have you ever heard of the Star Wars Minute? I have not. The Star Wars Minute is a just a brilliant, in my opinion, a brilliant idea for a show. They watch the movie Star Wars one minute at a time. So they will start oh, wow. the movie from zero, zero, zero and watch the first 60 seconds. And then they'll stop and then they'll talk about that 60 seconds of the movie. <laughs> and you would think this sounds a little tedious, but it is amazing. Right now, I think they're about an hour and a half, maybe two hours into The Empire Strikes Back at this point. So they've gotten a good, oh gosh, I don't even know, a couple hundred episodes? I'm, oh, I'm wow. But something like that. They're, they're about three quarters of the way through The Empire Strikes Back at this point. But um, if you'd like a good starting point, uh, of course the beginning would be great, but uh, if you just want to just dip in really quick to listen to an episode just to see what it's like. Um, episode or minute number 82, it's entitled Jarvis, J-A-R-V-I-S. And it is uh, featuring Doug Benson is oh, wow. as, as the guest. So if you like Doug at all, uh, go ahead and listen to Star Wars Minute number 82 entitled Jarvis. And that's, a, yeah. that's kind of a, a good point to start. And you know how we were talking about the 10-minute podcast, how they record is, you know, they get together and record maybe a, a bunch of episodes worth, and then they break it up and for that week. But uh, Star Wars Minute right. does the same thing. They get together, and they record, you know, five episodes, and then break them up and release one each day. And so each episode is about 15 minutes long. So if you start at 82, try to get through, you know, 82 to probably 85 or 87, so Doug would be on the next five episodes, I think, probably, I think is how they usually do it. Hmm. So uh, I, I kind of like that idea of recording that way. But I've also heard them say, the hosts uh, say that people have approached them to see if they could steal their idea to do with, like, other movies. And and so, I you know, it must be an effective method of recording because you know people are coming up and asking them if they mind if they use their idea which they said they don't care you know go ahead and do it if you want to you know and uh before we started this podcast i was one i was thinking of you know what makes a good a good podcast what would be something that i could talk about for a long time and i was thinking about doing the jaws minute i always thought that would be awesome because you know jaws is if not my favorite one of my favorite movies but you know that puts a cap on how many episodes you can have, and I would just want it to go on and on forever. But uh, yeah, so my uh, submission for the dunk tank this week is Star Wars, the Star Wars Minute, number eighty-two, Jarvis with Doug Benson. All right. <clears throat> what did you have for me this week, sir? It's a good thing I like Star Wars. Yes. Don't we That's... have matching Star Wars pajama pants? I think. Yes, we have. Be... I got mine at Target. Where'd you get yours? Uh, probably Walmart, I think. Yeah. You posted a picture of yours, and I was like, hey, I got those same those same pants. <laughs> There's a dude at work who is putting dreads in his hair, and he has, like, a nappy head wrap that is also that same material. No. Oh, cool. <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> funny. Right. 
Well, see, for you this week, I want you to listen to the Giant Bombcast. Okay, cool. You said you don't, you don't listen to a lot of gaming podcasts, and I know a lot of our listeners may not be gamers, but the Giant Bombcast, I say I don't have an episode in particular that you should listen to. I'll Maybe after the show, I'll get back with you about which one. You want to listen to one that's got Vinny Caravella on it. So if you look at the the descriptions... Just find one, any any of them that have Vinny, because the way Vinny, Caravella, and Jeff Gersman interact with each other is, is really good. Well, it looks like they do some live episodes, too. Yeah, but it's, that's not the best stuff. It's no. all E3 coverage. They do a show every day during E3. Th- those aren't my favorite. Good Lord, son. Talk about long episodes. These are all two and a half hours, three hours, 3.13. Yeah, those are ones I'll commit to, though, and listen 331, to. 331, 328, good lord. Oh, yeah. So, um, oh, man, the descriptions only have the date. I might need you to point out okay. a couple with, uh, what'd you say his name was, Vinny something? Vinny Caravella. God, I can't even pretend to spell Car- Caravella, maybe, something like that. C-A-R-A-V-E-L-L-A. Hey, that's what I guessed, all right. All right. All right, so I'm writing down Giant Bombcast and look up for one with uh, Vinny Caravella. All right, cool. Yeah, it's got a Jeff Gersman was he worked for he's a video game reviewer. He worked for was it GameSpot I think for a while, but you can find the video online of Jeff just there was a game called Canaan Lynch Dead Men I think that he was reviewing, so he goes on the website. And I think at the time the the show may have been on TV, and he absolutely just bashes this game, he gives his honest opinion of this game. He's like, "This game is just garbage. It's broken. Don't spend your money on this game." But at the same time, GameSpot was getting a ton of uh, advertising money from the publisher of this game. So on the website, there were all these ads for Kane and Lynch Dead Men for this <laughs> game he was bashing. <laughs> So I think they, they told him to redo the his review, or he was fired, and he basically said, well, fuck it, then I'm fired, because I'm not going to lie about this game. It's terrible. And, Did you uh, say he, it was GameStop that he worked for? Or GameSpot, I'm sorry. Oh, GameSpot. So he, he left there and decided he was going to start his own video game review site and just give honest opinions. And in these shows, you'll get his honest opinions. There, there's things he just does not like, like Yoshi from uh, the Nintendo. Any any Yoshi game, he just what's, can't stand it. What's wrong with Yoshi? Come on, Yoshi's so lovable. He says Yoshi is an expendable carrier uh, character in the Mario universe, and games Yoshi should not have his whole game. A game just dedicated completely to him. Uh, well. I don't know if I can agree with him or not because I've never actually played a just a Yoshi game by himself. That so he might have a point there, uh, but just just in the Super Mario World, the first game for the Super Nintendo, just the Yoshi aspect of it totally blew my mind and totally changed video game mechanics as I knew it from then on out. It was just like you can ride this awesome dinosaur in each different color had a different power that you could use the yellow right. one stomped hard the one of them flew like the red one breathed fire like I, it was an amazing mechanic i thought yoshi was incredible but yeah i've never played one of his own singular games so who knows he might have a point there <laughs> what was he, his name you said jeff something gerstman g-e-r-s-t-m-a-n gerstman okay cool but in the with the show being two to three and a half hours long, there are several times they would just go completely off topic and start talking about music or something they saw on TV. So the show gets it's not all completely about video games. One guy talked about his sous vide for a while, something you cook with. I was gonna say, what is that? Uh, it's like boils food or I don't know what exactly it oh. does, but. Well, geez, Blake, uh, you know, speaking of getting off topic, I don't, I can't think of two other podcast hosts who do that all the freaking time anyway, so... I know, right? Gee whiz. <laughs> now, I will totally check out Giant Bombcast. You'll have to point out a Vinny Caravella show for me in particular to listen to. Yeah, the app but, I've got, it'll give uh, descriptions of the show, so I'll look over them here after this show, and I'll uh, send you a message with one that I remember good. that was pretty good. Hey, um, anyone out there... 
who happens to be listening to the show, I've been having lots of trouble with my iTunes app the last week or so. It's just it's had great days and horrible days where I just start a podcast and it'll crash ten seconds in. And it's not like uh, it shut down the whole app because it's in my running apps. If you open up, you know the that screen that shows you what apps are currently running. It, it says it's still running, but it crashes out all the time. And every once in a while, I'll go onto Twitter and post something, and you know that doesn't. I'm just trying to complain to someone to let them know, hey, shit's going bad. But you know that doesn't seem to get me anywhere. Right. So if anyone's well, ever had that same that same problem going on, you know. Please go ahead and contact us and uh, tell me some some good free podcast apps that I should be listening to instead of iTunes because I might have to find a different option. Right now I've got RSS Radio and it seems to be all right, but you know since I'm not familiar with it quite yet, I'm not practiced with it. It's still kind of clunky in my opinion. But um, yeah, I've been having a problem with my app recently. Yeah, my daughter has too on her iPod. She really I got her, I got her started here. She's got a uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab tablet, and she's got the same podcast app on it that I have on my phone. And uh, she got her hooked on uh, Welcome to Night Vale, so she has an, one of the new iPods at her at her mother's house. And when she's over there, she was going to download the show with the the iTunes podcast app. Uh huh. And it she just can't get it to work at all either. Yeah, she says either they so wouldn't weird. download. This week in particular, stop. though, that's crazy. That's great that you got your your kid hooked on uh, Night Vale. That, yeah, that's wonderful. Was, we were talking a few weeks ago, and you said that you were going to try to. You think that one of your kids would have liked that? That's great. I'm, I'm glad that she's taken to it. Yeah, I, I got to find something after Night. I don't think she'd be into We're Alive, but I got to find something else after Night Vale that she could listen to. She likes the just overall just bizarreness of that story. So that's great. But she she subscribed to Welcome to Night Vale and Max Level, so. I trained her well. Ah, I don't boy. So you got to pump up your own numbers there. You want to hear Daddy talk about video games? It's like I've got my wife subscribed to Earwash and she doesn't even know it. There you go. Let's make her download it. Yeah, we went and bought her the new iPhone 5S or C or F or Q, whatever. I don't know what, what it is, but uh, we got her the new iPhone this past week. So she's got, you know... 32 gigs of space to for me to fill up with podcasts that she doesn't know I, I'm going to subscribe you, her to. Do you know why it's okay for her to have an iPhone? Because she's a girl? Because it's a girl phone? Yeah, I, th- I thought you might say that. <laughs> it's for 16-year-old girls. It's for 16-year-old girls and those of us who are not technologically sound like me. I, I, I know enough to get through it, but... Uh, you know, it, it works well for my purposes. Uh, I basically just use it for listening to podcasts. It's an doing, iPod with a phone on it. That's all doing, it is for you. Doing <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, that is all I got for this week. What, how about you? Yeah. The um, So I got the Giant Bombcast to listen to. What I else? There's the something else I was going to check out, too. I'm going to check out uh, the Church of... What's it called? The Church of... The Church of What's Happening Now. That's it. Yeah, I yeah. want to hear more of Joey Coco. I I just love listening to him talk. His his voice and his mannerisms are just so right. He's, he's great. This is like a real speech. scary if you were around him. Oh yeah. Um. Well, he's he's a felon. He has spent time in prison. Um. And because stand up comedy was his second career. His first career was uh you know street crime. Basically, he yeah. grew up grew up hustling in the streets of New York City. It was you know a, a one parent household and. Just had did what he had to do in order to get by back in the day, right. but be, because of that former life that he had and his stint in prison, it makes his comedy a million times better because he has all these wonderful stories, and you know they're not BS. You know, he just launches into these things, and he's so thorough with these stories that you know this actually happened to this dude. Right, it's wonderful. Yeah, please check out the Church of What's Happening Now. It's it's really cool. Well, all right, let's wrap this thing up and get out of here. Okay, uh, just real quick uh, for the echo chamber segment of the show this week. Um, since we still haven't had a uh, a call in, what we want to do with the echo chamber is have someone submit an audio feedback that we'll play on the show live, and you can just uh, tell us a podcast that you're into and that one that Blake and I should listen to. Uh, but let's uh, let's do the echo rift this week. If you want to jot that down, we can maybe 
listen to that and discuss that. That's one that Dale listened to that he said uh, he also thinks is really good. And uh, it's the highest quality podcast that he knows. So, And I think that the Paper Keg is the highest quality podcast I know. So if they are saying that it is more high quality, then you know it probably has to be cool. We'll so uh, we're, let's just listen to an episode of the Echo Rift, and uh, we'll see what happens, what's going on with the Echo Rift. What do you say? Sounds good to me. All right, that's cool. How do how do people get a hold of us? Send us in some audio feedback or an email that we can read in the wiretap segment. Please do so at earwashshow at gmail.com. That is earwashshow at gmail.com. I don't think they can hear it enough. They, they can can't. Hear you say it. They can hear you say it now and during the outro. And uh, a million times in and out, before, after, over, on top, and underneath. That's right. All right, Andrew, it's been fun. Let's get out of here. All right, sir, I've had a wonderful time, and we'll see you next time. You have been listening to The Earwash Show. For more information on this and the other great podcasts on our network, please head on over to metalsharkstudio.blogspot.com. If you would like to send in a listener feedback email for the wiretap segment or a voice memo audio file for the echo chamber portion of the show, please do so at earwashshow at gmail.com. We are Earwash Show on Twitter. Please join the Facebook group, and your five-star iTunes review is always greatly appreciated. Your ears were filthy, but now they have been washed. If you like this podcast, then consider checking out the other great podcasts at metalsharkstudio.blogspot.com. Also consider clicking the donate button while you're there. It would be really cool if you did. Metal Shark Studio.